Hiya guys and welcome back to Wayne's Workshop. Um, little fill-in video, um, by popular demand, this little mice uh, that I found in a skip, uh, I have been asked to, to show me sort of putting it back together or getting it into working use again. I'm going to set it up with soft drawers, but first of all it needs a really good clean, so we're going to strip it all apart and that sort of thing. But that's moving on. Right, um, some mail has arrived. Um, some stickers have arrived from a YouTube channel and uh, bloggers called Pedalbox. Now, Pedalbox um, is Chris and Adrian, and I do know Adrian. I've known him for quite... Uh, Adrian, I know. <laughs> I've got Adrian on the mind. I've known Chris for a number of years now, probably uh, six, seven, eight years, something like that. We were work colleagues at one point, um, but he was always interested in cars and what have you. Now, Pedalbox, uh, I've got a fleet of sort of classic cars, various diff different, uh, uh, an eclectic mix of cars. Um, but between Chris and Adrian, they're building a track car based on a box action Caterham uh, frame, um, which looks like it came from a skip when they first got it. Um, but it's going to be like a space frame or Super Ligera style um, body with lots of, uh, should we call it tubing? Um, sheet metal covering, that sort of thing. And in the rear of this vehicle is a Audi TT turbo motor. All the suspensions, trick, and everything's been done, sort of all bespoke stuff. So that's Pedalbox. So uh, that's the channel. Check them out, guys. Uh, good bunch of lads. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting seeing them going along their journey. And very much my, like myself, um, they make it up as they go along. You know, they'll say, right, well, this is the bit we got. Let's make it fit somehow, um, which is very similar to my design philosophy anyway. So that's pedal box. OK, so this vice. Um, right, it's, I won't say seized. I can turn the lead screw, but I think I'm going to give it all a good spray with WD-40 first, get it all loosened up and then strip it a bit. So yeah, WD-40, uh, you all know the stuff, or any other releasing oil will do. <laughs> so just giving it a quick uh, spray down on the slide ways. I think we'll get down in on that lead screw underneath. Give it all a good spray down. Um, I think we'll leave that for 10 minutes. I found a piece of bar here that will fit through here. It's too small for the hole. I couldn't make a handle out of it. Ah, it is actually moving now. As you can see, it is stiff. So I think, uh, oh, let me wind it off the edge of the little table I've got here. Oh, it's getting better. Oh, now it's slopping about all over the place. Oh. Where did that go? Oh, on the floor. <laughs> Suppose I could have held this in my vice to do it, couldn't I? In my other vice. <laughs> that would have been easier. Okay, I'm wondering if it comes right out. I think it probably will. Got quite a good opening for a small vice. We were still in the thread there. all sorts of grime going on in here as well. The one is stripping down for a clean out if nothing else. Oh. Okay, well that's the two halves of that. That's a good start. Well as you can see that the blue paint, I think it was just dunked in a vat of it because it's all inside the serrations of the jaws and the the Allen bolts here I'm pretty sure that they take a 5mm Allen key, but they're completely full of paint. So, just taking a little pick and just trying to peel the paint out. I've got a 5mm Allen key here. The ball end does go in. The plain end, I think I might get it now. Yes. Okay, so I'll probably be replacing those. I would imagine that they're uh, M6s. I just took the other jaw out, and as you can see, there's, uh, there's like a filler material that they've used in the back of the jaw. Yuck. 
peels away easy enough but this really was a <laughs> not I, I can't even say poor quality vice by the look of it it was I mean what's this here you know a great big lump of uh, whatever from the casting yeah it's, it's yuck. anyway I'm sure we can make it into something that works for what I want it for which is just a little soft jaw vice I don't know how well you can see this guys but you can see that this is all pushed off one side um, this is still quite stiff but then it, that could be grime um, there's a pair of washers and a spring here with a split pin holding it all captive but the mated faces the one this washer sits against is all out of square I mean, it's not even machined it's just raw cast um, the face at the front end is on is not flat so everything's jiggling about in all shapes here um, and it seems to predominantly well as you can see it wants to sit over to this side purely because this front face isn't square and probably an issue with this back face as well so I think we may do a little bit of machining of this casting before we move on so let's get this split pin out and just bend that lug up right I don't know whether you can see it. I've got an Allen key in, in shot in the uh, Oh, there she goes. I think that one might have snapped off then. Let's have a look. Rough old pair of pliers I'm using with this. Ooh. Yeah, that one's come off. I um, wonder if I can prise that out. get in there oh yeah I'm just gonna hold on to this I don't know whether that spring is gonna go shooting somewhere no nope, we're all right all right that's a split pin out I don't know whether I want to call that a lead screw <laughs> the screw is out we'll check and see how straight that is that's just awful it looks like it's there's a massive burr there. It's not even been deburred. That's well, it's not even finished. Anyway, well, this is shocking. Um, right, you can see in here. Let me just point to it. There's what appears to be a nail glued in there. As you can see, how rough the casting is. It's much higher on this side, and they've put a nail in there. Um, with a view to try and straighten up that washer a bit as it sat like that. So that's why it was all kiffed. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, God. Right, okay, awful. Well, I pulled it out, guys, and it really was a nail. Um, I'm looking at the blue paint on it. It's never had any other paint, so this is from the manufacturer with a nail embedded in some sort of gloop in the bottom of the casting. Um to try and straighten it up yeah just started to clean it up and uh, got this plate underneath I suspect that's part of the the nut I'm not going to call it a lead nut well, that screw came undone easy enough and yep there's the nut okay we shall have a look at that a bit later and I think we'll uh, continue cleaning this up I've got a little bit of Degreasant here, and uh, you know, one of those pot scour things, bit of Scotch Brite, just trying to get rid of the grime so I can work without gloves on. But it's horribly grimy at the moment. So, I've been cleaning this vice up, <laughs> I'm finding more horrors as I go. I'm beginning to see why it ended up in a skip because <laughs> I think that's where its uh, rightful home is. This surface here looks like it's been buzzed across with a 9 inch grinder. I think that's how it was manufactured. Uh, it's not flat. It rocks about all over the place. This surface looks like it's been across a mini machine. A, uh, you know, it's been uh, machined. And so have the two sides here. But uh, that's the bit you see, isn't it? 
<laughs> and I think this surface here was probably done at one time. Anyway, um, this surface has been machined and machined here, but, ugh, God, I can see why there was filler everywhere. Okay, issues. Um, if I were to put this right, I wouldn't want to do half a job. Well, I could just slap it back together, put some soft jaws in it, and it would be usable for what I want it for. But this space and this space would need to be machined. This would need to be machined. I'd have to remachine all the top, get it all squared up, make sure everything's right. Same with this. The lower running part of the jaws, you can see it's been touching up the front edges there. And somewhere on the end edges there, it's sloppy in there. I think we would have to machine those off, machine the front off here. Um, machine the base, it's not even machined. Again, I think that's been uh, looked at by a grinder to take the high spots off. Uh, not a grinder, yeah, like a nine inch bloody angle grinder to take the high spots off at some point. It's rough as. Um, lead screw, or the screw, uh, it's bent. I can, I can sort that out. Oh, God, it's sharp as well. It's the first time I've handled this without gloves on. Yeah, that's sharp. I mean, the whole thing is just a piece of garbage. Um, the nut, I mean, there's not even a machine face on here where this sat in the bottom. Um, it was sat cast against cast, so the, the location of that nut was not anywhere sort of special. I know there's plenty of slop in here um, where this fits. Um, which is just as well because the nut's probably way off where it's supposed to be and that's probably why it's bent so what do I do guys shall I fix it up or shall I put it back in the skip where I got it from or shall I clean it up grease it up take the lumps off put some soft jaws in it and have it as a handy bit of kit in the workshop the more I look at how horrible this thing is the more I'm thinking I did the wrong thing by saving it from the meltdown in the scrap metal skip. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know. It... Okay, so I could go to town on this, um, remachine everything, pack it up, pack it out so that everything runs and slides nicely. Um, probably make a new nut, machine all the underside, machine this space, machine this space so that everything fits, slides up. You know, probably make a new screw. Is it worth the effort for this? It's not, is it? Um, I should throw it straight in the skip, but it will be handy. Um, I'm going to clean it up. I think I will address that issue in there with that face where they had a nail and just run a cutter along there to get that straightened up. I think that might be uh, a wise move just to keep that screw straight. I'll probably put the... Uh, screw up in the lathe it's got a bend in it i can see about this position here it's bent round that's probably because nothing lines up but i can straighten that out and i think i'll pretty much lube it up might give it a coat of paint might not make some soft jaws for it put it back together and just use it as my grab something and go vice next to the mill so yeah i don't think it's worth a full monty on this i think if i wanted to do that i'd buy a decent vice that needed some work and do that on a decent vice rather than this um, skip worthy version. So I couldn't help myself. I just got to sort it out. So I got a long series cutter down in there and I'm just going to flash off that lump to get it sort of square. I really can't help myself, can I? <laughs> This front base is all skew if as well. There's no really no point in doing the back if I haven't got a area on the front for the shoulder of the screw to sit against. I can see the witness mark in the paint when I started. It was only on the one side. So uh, I'm not going to clean this up across the entire face, but just so that I've got an area for the underside of the screw head to sit against. I know, I know, why do I do this to myself? It was in the vice, it was on some one, two, three blocks squared at the top. 
I just thought I'd give it a tickle across the top. There's loads of slop in it anyway. So let's just go for some slop that's flat rather than what was there. Well, <laughs> it's up the other way. There's a horrible lump in the middle of this bit. I know nothing sits on it, but yeah. While I've got the cutter up, while the, uh, the mill is dirty with cast, why not? I'm wondering if this jaw surface is parallel to the guide for the jaw. I do not know. Anyway. Am I going to machine that as well? You know I am. That's just touched off on that face. I'm taking a point one cut. Let's see. Another point one, perhaps. Just touching the back face there. I think we'll take another point one. So the base, that's not very flat. I've just run a file over the bottom to take any high spots off that I could see. Um, yeah, and it's all shapes. I think. I've just run a file over here and it's not that bad a surface actually so I think what I'll do is use that as a reference set it on perhaps a one two three block that'll sit on there perhaps get a toe clamp in there and give this a flash over okay so I've been around this and I've taken 30 thou off it now uh, there's a little area there and a little area here um, I reckon another 5 thou and we'll just clean it up I just as well while I'm here so yeah there's another 6 thou there okay so um, I think I'm going to save my hands I've been winding my hand back and forth I think I'll do it in a series of uh, left and right passes now Uh, I haven't got much to go off for squareness on this so uh, I'm talking to you and not looking at my clock <laughs> so uh, I thought I clocked the original back face in so we're about 46 that end a bit of a dip there 46 rising up again so we'll just maybe 46 there drops off comes back up 46 well as you can see between the two bolt holes we're about 46 so I'll just nip up the other clamp make sure nothing moves particularly that's that one tight 
and that's that one tight. I was going to bolt it down by the two bolt holes, but the surface here, um, the 10 mil studs will fit through, um, but yeah, the, the, the surface on the top here is at a bit of a jaunty angle. So uh, I need to, um, I might flash those off as well, the surface where the nuts hold, are on it to hold the vice down. But let's just do another double check. So 45, 46, something like that. Back just inside the other bolt hole. Yeah, 44. Um, close enough, I'm going to machine the drawer here, the same as I did on the other one, so I won't show you that. But I am going to flash off the top of this sort of rear anvil. As you can see, I've just touched off on that and it's uh, taken a scratch off all the way along, so my clocking up couldn't have been that far out. couldn't help myself. I flashed across the top of the vise, flashed across the base here, flashed across this face, and I'm now just cleaning up this face. A little anvil on the top. So I've done a touch off. This is four pounds. I think I'm probably going overboard with this vice for what it's worth um, but uh, yeah I'm not going to do the full Monty on it as I've been saying all the way through this and I keep going oh I'll do this little bit I'll do that little bit but yeah I'm going to draw a line under it there I think guys um, I'll straighten out the lead screw give it a coat of paint put it back together make some new jaws for it I might show you making the new jaws and uh, pretty much that's it and I'll bolt it onto my bench so anyway, postman has arrived and we've had another uh, gift package, care package from Stephen who uh, regularly sends me parcels of goodies. He's been to the auctions again. Um, clamp type knurling tool. It's missing one of the wheels and the pin, but uh, I'm sure we can uh, find a set of wheels for this. Uh, you can buy them online. So yeah, that's useful. Um, I would have to machine down the, the main holder or I could pass it on, I could do it up, get it working, and maybe pass it on to somebody who's got a lathe large enough to take, um, what is that, it's probably three quarters of an inch. Um, I do have a candidate in mind, but thank you for that, Stephen. Um, right, okay, I'm just going to tip out the bag on the back here. There's nothing breakable in that part. Okay, uh, so first of all, an easy lap, fine one. I haven't got any of these. I uh, tend to use oil stones for honing uh, lathe tools and what have you. But yeah, I'm going to, uh, I may be converted, but a uh, little lapping, uh, fine, easy lap, lapping stone. I got it upside down. Yeah, it's a diamond lap, basically. Uh, doesn't show up very well. But yeah, um, I've seen lots of people using these, and yeah, I'm sure we're going to give that a go. Uh, again, a couple of milling cutters, one here about uh, half inch, maybe a bit, bit bigger, maybe 13, 14 mil uh, with 45 degrees ground on the end of it. Appears to be done on a cutter grinder, it looks correct. Um, it's got primary and secondary angles, ground everything else, so that might be very useful for um, machining a 45 degree fillet in the corner or something, so that's handy. Um, another cutter here. Um, these are all good quality cutters. I mean, this one's a Hydra cutter, um, British made from Sheffield, and it's a, a 3.8 high speed steel. Appears to be brand spanking new, so really useful. Um, it's got the Clarkson type thread on the end, but they will go in my uh, ER32 collets. So, yeah, really interesting, this lot. Um, a selection of BA spanners. Now, uh, I'll probably get the largest one. Ooh. Drop one on the floor. Oh, come back, come back, come back. Oh, and then hit my head on the bench as well. <laughs> okay, so these ones are um, Draper. There's a set of these. Um, and they say British made on them. I got the largest one. Don't know whether we can get that into focus. But these are Draper. Uh, back when Draper was made in the UK, not all Chinese import. Set of BA spanners. It looks as though somebody's uh, machined the end of that to fit into a specific purpose. But yeah, there's uh, 
let me get all of those out that's a different one that's a different one that's a draper 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 that's a different one interesting spanners draper again different one yeah so a good range uh what's the smallest 6ba right up to uh i think it's oba yeah 6ba right up to oba in british made draper spanners so yeah you probably saw i got this sort of chinese generic set from um you know off ebay tool zone ones but these are far better so thank you for those Stephen. and then these are interesting um i've never heard of this company before i'll get you the largest one um, this one's actually a Whitworth spanner, but Terry Spanners, made in England. Um, here we are. Let me get it in the camera. I uh, don't know whether it quite shows. Terry Spanners. I'll do a bit of research on these, but uh, so that one's a 3.8 width, 5.16 width spanner. And obviously we go down into some BA ones here. Um, the smallest being, again, Terry Spanners. The smallest being... I can't even read it, it's that small. Get the light right. The smallest being a little 10BA. Um, but yeah, Terry's spanners, again, BA spanners, really useful. Um, you know, <laughs> with doing these model things, everything seems to be BA with these Stuart model ones. So, Stephen, brilliant. And another oddball, one oddball one, Super Chrome. A 4BA, 5BA combination spanner there. Um, excellent. So yeah, nice collection of BA spanners. Uh, obligatory G clamp. Um, you can never have too many of these. Um, again, how often do you see made in England on stuff? So that's got a little bit of age to it. Everything's made in China now. Um, what seems to be well, it's a little carbide braze tipped uh, tool. Um, what is it? Probably six or eight mil, maybe quarter square. Um, little lathe tool ready for a grind and I've got an easy lap or what have you I may be able to do something with that one um, it may be this would make a good insert tool for a boring bar ground up for internal screw cutting being that small so yeah that's going to have a use going forward I'm sure and then we have a little tin here of goodies um, right there's two of these I'll show the one so it's two very small little toe clamps um, with the packing blocks now these would fit my rotary table about the sort of size for that and they'll also fit on my tooling plate as well um the hole in the center will take a six mil bolt nicely so there are a pair of those um another what looks to be a little shop made special purpose clamp so that's useful as well again more melon cutters and actually, I've only just spotted this, um, something that's going to be very useful. Um, yeah, more milling cutters, all in good order. So, yeah, you could never have too many. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, selection of, oh, hang on, we've got the T-nuts. The little T-nuts that go with those little clamps. So, happy days. Um, and then a selection of centre drills. Again, you could never have too many. There's quite a few in there, centre drills. Um, but well, interestingly, I did mention on a video a few weeks ago, there's a long series centre drill. I could have done with that a couple of weeks ago, but Stephen, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, when you've got that sort of difficult to access place, place where you've got something in the way, uh, Chuck won't go in, That that's superb. Thank you. Um, there was one other thing, um, part of a little combination square set, and I'm afraid our postman took a bit of a, well, not our postman but somewhere along the way a um, little combination square with a six inch rule and uh, yeah that got smashed up in the post but never mind um, the little scale will be useful I'm sure um, I do use these from time to time I do have one somewhere um, and also another stainless steel six inch rule again you're always looking for these this um, square on both ends that's brilliant so yeah happy with that so Stephen, as always, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, some real goodies there, and you've obviously been watching to know about the BA Spanners, 
uh, the long centre drill and everything else. So Stephen, nice one. So it just so happened that they had a very similar colour aerosol can in stock. Um, so I've masked off the bits that I want painted and just given it a quick coat. So plastic for the soft drawers. Uh, I cut two strips out of an old, uh, you know, cheapy 99p from the supermarket chopping board. Um, yeah, I mean it works fine. I've used this stuff for various projects. I think I've got a couple of spare ones left. So running the cutter nice and fast. It's quite burry stuff. This it uh, chucks up a burr quite easily. It's like a polypropylene. So just a clean up on one side. All I need at this point. Uh, a little bit more. 
and as you can see I've done the first one just run a cutter across top uh, holding it on the sides which are sort of you know they're, they're sort of finished thickness of what I'm after so yeah flash one side off then we're going to drill the holes and then I'm going to machine the jaws when they're in the vise okay for deburring this as I say sharp knife I'll just get it into the corner deburr that end There we go. So just to make life simple, I got the vice jaw, I blind it up, closed the vice, and it's put a couple of dimples. I can't see if you can see them. Yeah, there's one there and one there. Which are in line from that bottom machine face, which that was sat on. And basically it spots the two holes, and I'll do the same with the other jaw. And then drill the four holes and countersink them for the M6 screws. And these spot points, let me just uh, show nothing more than a grub screw with a centralized in fact in this case they're a ground point on them um, but yeah screw them in the hole and then they'll transfer the center of the hole onto the part that needs the aligning hole so yeah i've got quite a selection of these these are metric spot points i used to use them on press tools for uh, setting up die sets and what have you but very handy so i suspect this video is getting quite long now um, just replacing the little bolts uh, that came out of the jaws. Oop, I need to tighten up this vice on the bench. <laughs> With some stainless steel bolts. There we go. So I'll deburr that end of the thread and we'll fit the jaws. So the last bolt going in, just make sure they push down hard. Okay, and as you can see, all this slop in the vise, but that's uh, that's just the way it is. <laughs> so I've uh, put the vise up on the bed of the mill. I'm just going to close the jaws so that it's all square. And I'm going to machine across the top of the two jaws, or two soft jaws, in one go and probably just tidy up and have a dash across the ends of them as well. Um, I can't wind the handle all the way, so I'm having to do it in a series of back and forth slides now that we're over the table. I've had to set the vice that far back to accommodate for the travel on the mill. making sure that they're fully closed and they are not resting on any of the bolt heads in fact I'm just going to double check that yeah all my bolts are below surface I haven't checked I just have this sneaking suspicion that they weren't for a moment then so I'm going to tighten the vice up and flash across top yeah as you can see I'm just dressing them up so they're both level on the top and I'll probably run over the ends to square those up as well well there we are that's the sort of uh, vice put back together, complete with a set of polypropylene jaws. And it's now got a handle, it's clean, it's usable. Um, that's about all I can say about it. I've just got to find a spot for it now on the bench somewhere. Well, here we are, guys. That's about it for this one. And the uh, skip-worthy vice uh, it still should be in a skip, really. But uh, at least I can find a use for it. So this video has been quite a long one compared to normal. I think we're you know, well over the 30-minute mark, probably over 40 by the time I edit it all. Um, but obviously I didn't put a video up last weekend, so you get a bumper edition this week. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.